No place I would rather be No place I would rather be No place I would rather be Than here in your love Than here in your love There's no place I would rather be No place I would rather be No place I would rather be Than here in your love Than here in your love Welcome to Kingdom News Now. I'm Jack Gilday right here in Poplar Bluff, and we thank you for joining us tonight. And we're excited that you are being a part of this program tonight. We're coming into your living room or your home, your home or wherever it is that you may be viewing this program. We thank you for joining us tonight. And I believe that this program tonight is going to change somebody's life. Amen. So I want you to take just a moment before we get started. And if you haven't already done this, go to your phone. I tell you every week. Go to your phone, call your friends or your family and your neighbors and tell them that Kingdom News Now is on the air. And, and we, want, we want everyone that we can to join with us tonight and, and, and hear what God is speaking through this avenue of this broadcast tonight. And, and as you do that, I also want you to pull up Facebook on your phone or on your computer, whatever is, is handy for you, and, and go to facebook.com slash kingdomnewsnow and like the page. Like our, our Facebook page, and, and that way we can stay connected with you, and, and you'll know who our next guest is, and our, our next guest, and then you'll also uh, be able to watch the programs on Facebook and, and, and the YouTube links and such that we post online. And, and while you're there, just slip on over to facebook.com slash midnight cry, the number one, and post your most urgent prayer request. Uh, we have people from around the world that join with us on Midnight Cry all over Butler County, all over the state of Missouri, the United States, and 18 other countries that join with us in prayer over at Facebook.com slash Midnight Cry, the number one. Like the page, post your prayer request. I want to read just a couple requests, uh, prayer requests that we, we've pulled off Midnight Cry uh, page there. And the first one is to pray for a little girl with cancer. Her name is Zadi, and she's losing weight, and she needs prayer that she will be able to gain her weight back. And, and we want to believe God tonight together. We want you to be praying for Zadi and that God will not only cause her to gain her weight, but we bind and rebuke cancer from her body. We know that Jesus Christ is greater than cancer, and cancer has to bow its knee at, at the name of Christ. And, and so we want to agree in prayer for, for Zadi tonight. And, and uh, uh, another request is for Carol, who's recovering from a, a knee replacement. And we're believing for healing for Carol and all the other needs that's there. So if you've got a special request tonight, I want you to go uh, to that uh, page and I want you to post your most urgent need that you have there. And then you can also scroll through there and read some of the other requests and you can uh, pray over them as well. We have people that hit that page day and night and some people that can't sleep at night, they get up in the middle of the night, they go to the page and, and begin to pray and just scroll through the needs that's there. And, and we have gotten praise reports back from people from all over the country all over the world of, of God doing miraculous healings in their body and doing great things in their marriages and their homes. So be, I want, we want you to be a part of that tonight. Amen. So we're going to take a quick break. We're going to come back with our special guest tonight from right here in Poplar Bluff. And while we're on this break, I want you to go to those Facebook pages and like those pages and post your needs and, and, and like Kingdom News Now tonight. Amen. We'll be right back with you with our special guest. invited to the 84th annual Missouri Mid-South Gospel Singing Convention with over 30 premier gospel artists on Friday and Saturday, September 19th and 20th with a concert each evening beginning at 5 o'clock p.m. at the Malden Community Center on Business Highway 25, Douglas Street, Malden, Missouri. Hosted by Branson's own Heart to Heart with a silent auction both nights. Come and be blessed by national and regional anointed, award-winning Christian artists such as the Richmond Quartet, Heart to Heart, Tina Sadler, Wendell Johnson, Touched by the Masters Quartet, Joyful Noise, and many, many more. For more information, call Jerry at 417-576-5188 or email hearttoheartmusicgroup at gmail.com.
Welcome back to Kingdom News Now, and I'm Jack Bilday, and we're right here in the studios of, uh, of KNN and, and, and here in Poplar Bluff, and we've got a special guest in the house with us tonight that I believe God is going to use and speak through tonight of sharing his testimony and the word that God has uh, stirred on the inside of his heart tonight. Right here from Poplar Bluff, lives right here uh, in town with us, and, and we are so glad uh, to have him. He is a relatively busy fella. Uh, he attends over at Mount Calvary Powerhouse Church. He's uh, the sound engineer over there at Mount Calvary. He's uh, a praise team leader, and then he's also one of the associate pastors over there. And uh, so it is so good to have Sean Thompson in the house with us tonight. Well, you. Thank we you want to welcome you to Kingdom News tonight, and, and thank you for joining us. Thank you so much. Amen. Uh, you're a pretty busy guy uh, when it comes to Mount Calvary, aren't you? I stay busy, yes. <laughs> <laughs> we, uh, well, we were just with you just a few days ago, and we've seen you running around here and there and doing a little bit of everything. And but you are the sound engineer. Yes, I am the sound engineer. Have been uh, been so for the last two years. Uh, and the conference time is a, <laughs> it's a very hectic time. But you know what? God gives us strength, and I, and I love it. Amen. Amen. Uh, we we were there with uh, uh, teamwork makes the dream work. Right. Uh, conference just a few days ago, and and then you're also a praise team leader. Yes, uh, been with the praise team also for uh, for two years. And it's been an amazing, you know, experience to uh, to be able to lead the praise and worship. Um, you know, and it really is an honor and a privilege, you know, to to have that uh, to have that uh, in you know in the in the works in the works there. So. Amen. And then also one of the associate pastor. Yes, yes. The, you know, the, when I think about that, <laughs> you know, it's an awesome thing for a man to trust you with his. You know, with his congregation, you know, and so you know, I'm, I'm really, I'm really humbled, you know, by that that he would select me for, for such a, for such a job. But mm -hmm. you know, I love God and I love God's people. Amen. Uh, you know, under the direction of Bishop Ron Webb there at Mount Calvary Powerhouse, yes. and and uh, awesome man of God, a uh, tremendous man of God, and 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 brings some great people in to minister to the people, the local people here as well. Yes. And uh, we was there just a few days ago with you with. Uh, uh, Bishop Clint Brown, Pastor Rod Parson. Absolutely. And uh, uh, you said you said earlier something about you enjoyed working with, with Clint Brown's uh, sound, sound man. Yes, I, I really, uh, I thoroughly enjoyed working with the sound tech. Again, you know, with teamwork, you know, you would think that the teamwork is uh, it just happens on the stage, but no, it happens behind the scenes, Absolutely. you know, as well. You know, to be in that environment, to where uh, where you know, you're on an equal playing field. And um, and you know God is working through uh, both of you. You know the, the sound engineering is such an important part. You know of the of the conference ex yes. experience. <laughs> yes. You know not many of us are back there in the booth, right. but it is such an important part. And we were just able so able to complement you know, one another in such a fantastic way. Uh, you know, you know, he came in and they told me, said, man, I'm here to learn from you. I said, no, I'm here to, <laughs> I'm here to learn from you. <laughs> uh, you know, but, you know, that's the very definition of teamwork, yeah, though. Right. You know, um, because even sometimes when I had to step away, you know, you know from, the, from the engineering booth, you know, he was able to, to step in, you, you know, and we just worked very well with each other. Yeah. It's such a fantastic And experience. that's exactly the way the body of Christ needs to be. Yes. You know, teamwork makes the dream work. Yes. You know, it, the, the the word tells us there's a scripture that says that that uh, there's a multi multitude of business that takes place to make the dream work. Absolutely, absolutely, and and we don't have time right. to be envious of one another's absolutely. gifts and talents. Right. You know, because the Bible also says that we are members of the same body. We don't all, <laughs> you know, and what that literally means is is that you know you and I may not be gifted in the same way, mm -hmm. you know, but I can learn from your gift, and you can learn from mine, and no, and guess what? Nobody is threatened. <laughs> exactly. I believe it's Proverbs that says the man's gift will make room for him. Absolutely. <laughs> you know, it, there is a room. There is room for your gift, and and not interfering with anyone else's gift. Oh, absolutely. And, you know, and and uh, uh, you know, I, I think Sean of of uh, the sound man in the church. There's two things I've always heard all my life that uh, uh, that of, of positions in the church that I don't cover. I've pastored mm. for many many years, and I think I'd rather pastor than number one drive the church bus. <laughs> I don't want to drive the church bus because you've got kids that screaming and you got to scream back at them and then you make the parents mad and you got to deal with the mad parents and such yes. and and, uh, uh, and the other position is a sound man. This is a sound man because you can't please everybody in the house. That's that's absolutely absolutely right and you have to know your role and yeah. be comfortable with making decisions you know in that role and you know some may not realize how you know the sound engineer um, is an important part of the relationship. Between right. Right. the guests, the, the the host church and the guests that that come in, you know, we play in a, a, a vital part. 
you know, and if, if my spirit isn't right, <laughs> yes, that's right. you know, it affects the tone of the work environment sure. in, the, in the church, you know, and so it, it really is an honor, and we have to look at it that way because it's, it's God that gives us, <laughs> you know, the wisdom. It's God that gives us the strength to, to do these things, okay, and so in light of that, then when, when I'm doing my job and I'm doing my job with the spirit of excellence, then the people that I work with, you know, whether I know them or not, right. you know, they are a vital part of what I do and not to treat them with as such. Amen. You know, I, I have to tell you that I believe that Bishop Ron Webb, of course, absolutely is, is an anointed man of God. Oh. He hears and knows the voice of God. Yes. And, uh, uh, you know, I know that when I pastored, I didn't want people on my leadership team that I knew wasn't anointed. Absolutely. You know? Absolutely. Well, well, you know, you know, to have that can leave a gap. Absolutely, yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? You know, in, in the sound engineering booth, there have been moments to where, you know, we're all up and shouting in the, yeah, <laughs> you know, shouting in the booth, and then it's always that way. Well, who's, who's got the sound board? <laughs> 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 you know, but God, well, God is in it, and I love working in, in that environment, you know, where, you know, the Spirit of God is, is high and the anointing uh, is present because it doesn't matter where you are in, right. that, in that building. You know, if, you, if you're in there and you're listening to the Holy Spirit, if you're you know, a, a part of the worship experience, man, it just, it just heightens the fellowship Amen. that much more, even from behind the booth. Amen. You know, it takes, and we're going to talk just a moment here about this, and we're going to get into your personal testimony, but it takes someone that knows how to worship mm -hmm. in what they're doing yes. for, the, for the church, for the kingdom, as well as somebody with their hands up worshiping, dancing, and praising the Lord. You know, it, it's not everybody that can do that. That's right. You know, with the Bible tells us we have to watch as well as yes. <laughs> as well as pray. And and when you are working in the ministry, as in you have a job to do in in the in the church, right. uh, you know, you have to be both you know uh, gifted uh, and talented in the area that you're working in, mm -hmm. but you have to be a worshiper first, okay? Because you know, only uh, it's a worshiper you know that understands. The That's environment right. that That's understands right. the atmosphere, yes. uh, you know, and and you know, for example, you know, if I'm not where I need to be, you know, then the engineering that I do on the board, okay, can cause someone to miss yes. <laughs> yes. Yes, <it laughs> the can. word for that <laughs> for that moment, you know, and so so I have to be very careful, you know, and a lot of times I'm sitting there, I'm I'm, I'm praying, you know, I'm speaking in tongues, but I'm also I'm turning up. <laughs> That's right, at the same time. That's at the right. same time. That's right. And, you know, we have to train ourselves to be able to do that. Right. It's not everybody that can do that when they get saved. Right. You know, or even some people have been saved for years still can't do that. Right. You know, and that's nothing, no reflection on them. I'm just saying you have to train yourself to be able to do that. Yes, yes. Uh, you know, to be able to worship at the same time that you're working. Yes. Uh, you know, and, 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 and what, what God does, the, when you worship, you know, God honors that, <laughs> that you're amen. worshiping. And somehow or another, you know, a lot, a lot of times I don't, I don't know how, you know, the sound has worked out yeah, uh, because, you know, I'm, because, you know, I let God take over. <laughs> you in another world somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's such an awesome experience. It really is. Well, aside from your duties at, at Mount Calvary Powerhouse mm -hmm. Church, you also work uh, for the state of Missouri. Yes, I do. At, at the Sears, uh, is that the name of this? W W.E. Sears uh, Treatment Center. Yes. Uh, here just in, outside uh, Papa Bluff. just outside Papa Bluff. Uh, and I'm a teacher there. You know, and have an opportunity to uh, minister to so many, you know, right, that yeah. that come through there. Uh, so many guys, you know, that uh, that need guidance and, and and mentoring, you know. And I, I really do love it because, you know, I, I tell you what, you know, I was a public school teacher, you know, uh, and you know, I loved working in a public school, you know. But there's something different about being in a place to where, you know, they're looking to come out of trouble. You know, and you have the opportunity, opportunity to affect their lives from the front lines. <laughs> you know, and it, it's different. You know, so I'm busy with the church. With, you know, but the ministry really is on my job. <laughs> yeah, yes, <that's laughs> you right. know, and it's and, and 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 I've grown so much from that. Right. You know, from that experience. You know, because you know when you come into ministry with uh, with various expectations, uh, you come into ministry with various ideas of what ministry is. Mm -hmm. You know, but until you're ministering to someone who, who sits there and tells you, you know, I don't care what you say. Right. <laughs> yeah. This is not going to help me right. <laughs> when, I go, when I go home. And to be able to consistently stay with them because they can't go anywhere. Right, because they're there. <laughs> they're there. And to watch the conversion. And, not, and it's not just because you're, you know, uh, browbeating them with the Bible, right. you know, every right. day. But you're letting your life 
and the way you treat them speak for you know be a witness you know um, uh, to the Christ that is that is inside you uh, you know and so many of these guys you know they uh, they, they listen, you know, I've had, I've had guys come to me and say, listen, you know, uh, I don't really believe in God, but I really want you to pray for me. <laughs> <laughs> you wow. know, you know, okay. and, and, you know, and at, at first when you, when you hear that, okay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, Lord, you really have to speak to me right, <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> or, right now, but we have to, re- we have to remember, you know, we're examples. Yeah. We're examples. Right. And we're to show them, you know, we're to show them that, listen, you know, God will receive us. You know, if we really want it, right. yeah, you know, and it doesn't it doesn't matter that they don't have time to come to church. <laughs> uh, Sometimes right. they're right there in a room, and you take them just as the, as as they are, right. you know. And we bless. I, I thank God. I, I so thank God for the opportunity to minister uh, with uh, with the the youth of Papa Bluff. Is right. is it, my God is it has really expanded uh, right. the way I think about ministry. You are you are doing an awesome job there. I know and and. Absolutely. You know, one of the greatest lessons that that Jesus brought was the idea of what compassion is. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Exactly. You, you know, how many times in the New Testament they talk, well, Jesus moved with compassion exactly. <laughs> you know, on them. You know, he was there, you know, as an administrator, as a teacher, but there are even moments in his teaching, you know, that he was moved with with compassion. <laughs> with compassion. Yeah, yeah, you know, and it was that compassion that led him to do things like feed the yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, feed the five thousand. <laughs> yeah, you know, because there comes there comes a point in ministry to where speaking Bible is not enough. That's right. That's exactly right. <laughs> speaking Bible is not enough. Okay? To physically put your hand to the plow mm-hmm. okay, means that you are meeting the need where the dirt is. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Well, you know, Scripture even says that. Yes. But, but Sean, scripture talks about, you know, uh, finding someone that is hungry or thirsty and saying, you know, well, we're going to pray for you. Well, that <laughs> prayer is good, and you need to pray for them. Right. But they need food. Yes. You know, they need water. They need, yes. you know, they need, they need something. They need their need met. Uh, absolutely. Uh, uh, you know, and, and, and I know, uh, you know, you're talking about the compassion um, that that you have that God brings forth and brings out of you yes. uh, for those boys that that have done wrong that that are there for a pur- they're there for a reason right right you know? they're there for a reason and then the same at the same time you know God is showing you you mm-hmm. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know and I've, I've heard many times you know that if you had the pastor could you pastor yourself wow <laughs> that's something to think about. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and working in this environment, it literally uh, uh, forces you to to consider that uh, because you're because you you are in a position to nurture uh, and to and to help you know these young men to come out of troubled situations. You know, you have to deal with you. You have to look at yourself. You have to look at your inhibitions. You have to look at your belief systems. You have to look at how far God has brought you. To be able right. to be at uh, at the level to where you can even mentor you know, somebody else, you know, and if you're not careful, you know, you're not talking the other day. If, if you're not careful, you know, if someone is is bleeding on the inside, right. <laughs> right. you know, there's more than one way to wrap to wrap a wound, you know, yes. but not every way is the correct way. That's right. <laughs> yeah, That's and right. if a, if a wound is not wrapped correctly, the person is still bleeding. You may not see, <laughs> you right. know. The, you may not see the blood, but they're still right. bleeding. It's not wrapped right. correctly. Right. right. And so, and so as, 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 from a ministry standpoint, you know, I had to learn how to wrap correctly. And, yeah. <laughs> you know, That's good. And I do that by observing where I am, okay, and, and realizing that, you know, God called me, God called us to be effective leaders, not for our own sake, you know, because our name is moot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Our name has nothing to do with it. Right. Okay, right. you know, but God called us, and we we've, we've gone through uh, the situations we've gone through in our lives, so that we can lead someone else to Christ, so that we can have the appropriate level of of, of compassion. You know, because you know, we are we are not to judge one another. Okay, we can judge the fruit. Yes, that's right. <laughs> There's a big difference. There. <laughs> we can judge the fruit. 
<laughs> and, but, to, to, but we are not to judge one another. It's our responsibility to lead people to Christ by example first. <laughs> by example Amen. first. You know, because it's, it's by our example that we cause the, we cause the curiosity. <laughs> you know, I remember, you know, one, at one point in my life, you know, I was, I was busy at a, at a young age, and, and I had done some, some really terrible things, you know, uh, at, a, at an early age. And I was working in a factory, you know, and, you know, God had already changed my heart, you know, uh, and I had, I had begun the transformation to, to Christianity. And then uh, what happened is that someone in that factory said, I know who you are. <laughs> I know what you've done, yeah. you know, and, you know, uh, Brother Zach, you know, I couldn't respond. Right. God wouldn't let me respond. Mm-hmm. God said, listen, just be quiet. <laughs> okay. wow. And so sometime later, it must have been probably six, eight months later, the same person comes back to me and says, you're not who I thought Ooh. you were. You're not who... You used to be. <laughs> you know, you're not who, who they said yeah. you were. Right. You know, and I had the opportunity to minister to her. I said, yes, because God has changed. Amen. Amen. God has changed my life. Amen. Praise God. If you just joined us here at Kingdom News now, we're, we're, we're sharing and visiting with, with uh, Sean Thompson from Mount Calvary Powerhouse Church right here in Poplar Bluff and, and uh, just sharing a little bit of just God's goodness to us. <laughs> Amen. And, and you, Brother Sean, you mentioned something just a little bit ago that mm-hmm. I want to come back to here in just a moment. Yes. We're going to take a quick break here, and we're going to come back to something. Then we're going to get into Brother Sean's personal testimony uh, for just a little bit tonight. But, but uh, uh, we want to share this, this wor- a little bit of worship with you tonight. And, and so just enjoy this tonight, and, and be sure and don't go nowhere. Come right back here, amen, because we're going to be back in just a couple minutes. Uh, and Brother Sean's going to share some other things with us tonight, amen. We lift up your name. You are king. Hail Jesus, you're my king. Hail Jesus, you're my king. Your life frees me to sing. Your life frees me to sing. I will praise you all my days. I will praise you all my days. Perfect in all your You're my Lord. Hail yes, you Jesus, are. Jesus, you're my Lord. I will obey your word. I will obey your word. I want to see your kingdom come. I want to see your kingdom come. Not my will, but yours be done. Not my will, but yours be done. Glory, glory to the Lamb. Glory, glory <laughs> to the Lamb. You take me You take me in. you 
are invited to the 84th Annual Missouri Mid-South Gospel Singing Convention with over 30 premier gospel artists on Friday and Saturday, September 19th and 20th with a concert each evening beginning at 5 o'clock p.m. at the Malden Community Center on Business Highway 25, Douglas Street, Malden, Missouri. Hosted by Branson's own Heart to Heart with a silent auction both nights. Come and be blessed by national and regional anointed, award-winning Christian artists such as the Richmond Quartet, Heart to Heart, Tina Sadler, Wendell Johnson, Touched by the Masters Quartet, Joyful Noise, and many, many more. For more information, call Jerry at 417-576-5188 or email hearttoheartmusicgroup at gmail.com. Welcome back to Kingdom News Now. We're sitting here talking with Sean Thompson from right here in Poplar Bluff. And uh, he attends over at Mount Calvary Powerhouse Church with, uh, under the direction of, of Bishop Ron Webb. And, and Powerhouse Church, that's, they, the name is right. <laughs> it is a powerhouse for the kingdom of God. And, and uh, uh, very active in the, in the church there and, and, and does lots of leadership positions there in the church and, and so on. And then also uh, he's been sharing about working uh, out at uh, Sears uh, with the young men over there and, and such and, and becoming that light and mentor and, and ministering to those to those boys and, and watching God change and transform uh, their lives. And, and, and Sean, I want to I talk for just a moment. I want you to go back to uh, the beginning. Uh, you was born and raised in, in Boston, Massachusetts. Actually, I was, I was born in Virginia oh, okay. and raised in, in, in Massachusetts. Um, you know, such a um, a tremendous city. Uh, you know, I w we lived on a on a one way street that was you know, supremely di <laughs> diverse. <laughs> you know, um, uh, I, and you know, we owned a uh, a three story um, apartment uh, building that overlooked you know the horizon, and and it, it was such a uh, such a grand place to uh, to be. Of course. You know, relatively much noisier than, yeah, than, <laughs> than Papa Bluff. <laughs> <laughs> than Papa Bluff, you know. Uh, but you know, we moved to we moved to uh, to Tennessee, you know, uh, when I was in high school. Uh, matter of fact, it, it was it was after you know someone had been murdered on our doorstep. You know, uh, we we left Tennessee. Uh, we left uh, Massachusetts and and uh, moved to, to Tennessee. And uh, I'm telling you, what a transition! Oh, sure. <laughs> You, you mentioned that you lived in McKenzie, Tennessee. McKenzie, Tennessee, yeah. Where you moved to McKenzie, Tennessee, and I shared with you earlier that McKenzie, Tennessee is about 20 miles from my home. <laughs> uh, I used to attend the First Assembly of God Church there in McKenzie for years, back years there. ago, and uh, uh, and and so a little bit of my stomping ground, not not you know not very far from actually where I went to school, where I was right. raised at. Uh, and, and they're in McKinsey, and I couldn't believe that, man, I'm talking to a fellow from McKinsey, Tennessee, <laughs> you know, and, and uh, uh, you know, McKinsey is, is just one of the places you're never from. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> this is true. Uh, this is true. Yeah, yeah, you know, um, you know, you know we, moved to, we moved to, uh, to Tennessee, and, you know, we were in McKinsey, and there, you know, I really, you know, uh, grew up a bit. Um, Eventually, you know, became a city councilman. You know, I was also on the uh, on the fire department. You know, um, amongst other <laughs> other things. Man, my life is busy. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so, but it's it's a, a, a unique place. You know, a, a college town. Uh, and so, it's, it's a great place to be. It, it, right. it, it really is. It is. And uh, and so, you yeah, but you know, my mother was there. And uh, and she. Uh, she was a musician, you know, at the time, and she had somehow or another got hooked up with Bishop Webb, <laughs> uh, you know, and ended up going on the road, you know, um, uh, with him you know, quite a bit, you know, and so she decided that she was going to, to move to Missouri uh, so that she could, you know, uh, be with uh, Bishop Webb's ministry. And, uh, and it, it was some time later, uh, probably, you know, probably a good 10 years, 10, 12 years later, you know, that, um, that I joined her, um, my family and I joined her here. Uh, and, you know, it, it's, Pop Up is a, it's a wonderful place. Amen. It's a wonderful place. But, you know, what really just, just spoke to us, though, uh, was the ministry of, of, Bishop, uh, of Bishop Webb. Uh, and it's such a tremendous man and, and guiding spirit 
you know, uh, God souls to to Christ, and um, you know, uh, he 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 preaches you know, the uh, restoration. Man, yeah. <laughs> you know, and I'm so thankful that God restored. Yeah, yeah, because <laughs> yeah, because it, it ain't always been that you've worked in the church. No, no, it's not always <laughs> been that that I've worked in the church. You know, um, and even though I did work in, in church, you know, uh, um, you know, before I, I came here. You know, I wasn't always at my best as a Christian. <laughs> you, you know, um, because what happens? You know, sometimes you know we're, you know, we're converted, mm-hmm. okay, but we haven't matured. <laughs> right. That's right. <laughs> you know, and so you know, as we are going through that transformation process, you know, we are, uh, we are, you know. It, in and out of, of temptation and, and dealing with situations you know that are common <laughs> right. common yes. to man yes. you you know um you know and and my my struggle uh at that particular time you know and, and earlier this stems back to my younger days um you know difficult time with with drinking you know and pornography um you know, uh, you know uh there's such a, such a Man, when I think, when I, even when I go back and think about it now, <laughs> you know, it's amazing how far, <laughs> you know, that how far God has God has brought me from, you know, because even even as uh, as later on, you know, when I began to minister, you know, when I first entered the ministry, you know, man, I battled with the same sure. with the same things, you know, and 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 the reason why I can share that is because God has delivered me from right. that, right. <laughs> and I'm so confident that right. God would touch somebody else's heart because there are so many people that, you know, that come to Christ and they feel as though if they don't get it all right yeah. this right second, now. right now, right this second, then the cause is lost, yeah. you know, and, and, I, and, and I, you know, and you and I were sharing before, you know, this habit with drinking and pornography was not, you know, a sometime, a sometime habit. This was an everyday, right. <laughs> all the, you know, uh, uh, was watching more pornography than I was regular TV. <laughs> you, you know, drinking more, uh, drinking more beer than than um, than anything else. You know, and so I had a, I had a tough time. It really had a hold. It got a hold. It had a hold. It, it was hold. it was a strong hold. <laughs> you know, but I remember, I remember this is you know before you know I married my wife. You know, I remember that um, I was sitting at home one night. Uh, it's probably about two o'clock in the morning, you know, and I was drinking and I was going about you know, business as usual. And I remember distinctly, you know, God speaking to me and saying, "What are you doing? Yeah. Wow. What are you doing? Sitting there drinking, <laughs> watching pornography. Watch pornography. Two o'clock in the morning. Two o'clock in the morning. And the Spirit of God speaks to you. Spirit of God speaks to me and says, "What are you doing?" Uh, and in that moment, I, I really, just really, I just really could not respond. Sure. <laughs> respond. Yeah. You know, you, you, you say it, Brother Sean. I, I want to stop for, stop you for just a moment, because mm-hmm. uh, I think there's probably somebody watching this program that thinks, "Oh no, that can't be. God's <laughs> not going. God's not going to speak to you, you know, in the middle of a, a, a situation like that." But I, I have to, I, we have to stop and tell tell them that that the truth is, um, God will speak to us any time that number one that He chooses because He's God. Yes. Um, but aside from that. Uh, you know, I believe that God can speak to us at any time uh, because, number one, he knows our heart. Right. He knows where we are in our heart. Right. Uh, you know, the, even even though the, the outward man right. is is involved in the sin. Right. Uh, you know, and, and that is the time that, that, you know, and I just preached this the other day, uh, you know, that God is drawn to darkness. Yes, absolutely. And, and, and the beautiful thing about God is that is that God is not so wrapped up in our presence that right. he doesn't push us to our future. Amen. <laughs> you know what I mean? Amen. Because right. because we can we can we can be you know you know God specializes in taking what's broken, mm-hmm. okay, That's right. and making it new again. Uh, you you from from Genesis all the way to <laughs> to, way to, to, Reve- to Revelation. You know God is taking nothing and making it you know into something. In, into, into right. something. And even though I was involved in these things and I was involved in it heavily. You know, God knew my heart, and my heart was I didn't want to be <laughs> in this anymore. You know, and 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 I had to come to terms with myself, and we can talk about that you know in a minute. I had to come to terms with myself, but what God did when He spoke to me is that He interrupted the flow. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> he interrupted the cycle. Amen. 
<laughs> you understand what, I'm, you understand what I'm saying? And so in that moment, you know, my spirit had no choice but to, but to respond, Amen. you know, because it wasn't, you know, it wasn't, you know, someone, you know, speaking, speaking to me as if someone physically speaking to me. Right. It was God himself, Amen. and I knew it because nobody else, <laughs> nobody else was there, and I heard it just as he was sitting, just as, though, as though he was sitting right there in the room watching me. And you said, oh, what are you doing? <laughs> you know, and so, you know, uh, uh, and after sitting there and, 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 and questioning myself for a minute, you know, I took, I took, you know, all the liquor in my house, you know, and all the pornography, I piled it in a big box, mm-hmm. took it outside, took the garbage down. Set it outside the door. <laughs> I set it outside the door, outside the door, outside the porch, <laughs> uh, you know, I set it out. And um, and I went back in the house, you know, and that's where I gave my heart to the Lord. You know, I had been to church, sure. you know, I had re- I had you know, uh, uh, you know given my hand to the preacher, yeah, yeah, <laughs> you know, and and gone through the motions. had gone through the motions, you know. But in dealing with this, this is where where I first really began to know, you know, Christ personally. You know, we talk about as my personal Savior so often. I began to know him personally at that particular point. And, you know, I remember that even though, you know, even though, you know, God interrupted the cycle, even though my heart was reaching out for God, you know, the moment that God speaks to me, you know, the devil, Satan, he creeps in and says, you know what, you really don't want to give that up. Yeah. Sure. That's what <laughs> you know, and I'm saying, Lord, please, you know, help me. I cannot, <laughs> I cannot not deal with this, you know. And, you know, eventually... You know, and I, and I want people to understand this. You know, you know, eventually, what happened, you know, is that I said, you know what, you know, I can't, I can't, I can't, you know, I, I've invested too much <laughs> in this lifestyle, right. Right. you know. And so I opened the door to, <laughs> to, go, to go back, back <laughs> to go back outside, you know, and we're, still, we're talking about 2 o'clock in the morning, you know, and the box is gone. The box is completely gone, wow. uh, you know, and I'm looking I looked down the street. <laughs> and, and, and we're talking, how much, how much time span here? We're talking, oh, you set it out to you, went back we're, we're talking about a couple minutes. Wow. <laughs> we're talking a couple minutes. You know, not very long at all. Uh, wow. you know, and then and the, box, the box was gone. And, and I walked back into my house, and I got on my knees and said, thank you, Lord. <laughs> you know, yes. Because that was a, that was a, critical, a critical point. You know? and, and as I was, I was you know, thinking about that, you know, uh, what comes to mind for me is, is Matthew you know, 11. You know, where and and and, and twenty eight where, where Jesus says, you know, come unto me all ye that labor, <laughs> you know, and are heavy laden, you know, and I will give you rest. rest. You know, I had labored with that for so long, <laughs> you know, that I really didn't know what it was like to breathe outside of that. Right. And I remember when I walked back into my house after not seeing the box there, you know, a weight lifted off my chest and for the first time I could literally breathe <laughs> and not feel feel that weight. Right. And you and I were talking about how you know how you know we put aside the sin and then we have to set aside the weight, <laughs> set yep. aside the weight. Yep. And, and 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 God you know did such a, a miracle you know in my life at at, at that point uh, in in time. And and now I'm just so thankful to God you know that he, that He did that for me at that critical moment. And now when I'm when I'm ministering with other people you know and, and it doesn't have to be about pornography. It doesn't have to be about liquor. It's about knowing that no matter what we are involved in, God has the ability and the power to pull you out. God is calling somebody that's watching this program to stop what you are doing and listen to me for just a moment. You know, and and, 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 and here's where where I believe, uh, 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 Brother Jack, I believe that we are at a crucial time Mm -hmm. right now. And, and, And it's crucial because, you know, God is uh, using the events of this world right now to say, listen, you know, you spent all this time, you spent your entire life, okay, looking for your help elsewhere. Right. In this day and that, I need you to look. Amen. Amen. <laughs> look Amen. to me. We, we, we spend our time looking for answers. Yes. Looking for help everywhere else. Yes. And, and I believe that, Brother Sean, I believe that God is, is, is speaking and saying, look to me. Yes. You know, the Word tells us, to, tells us as His children. Right. You know, to, to look unto the hills where our help comes from. Right. Uh, but, but even we're talking about those of you that's sitting watching this program that doesn't know Jesus Christ as your Savior. You may be uh, bound to alcohol, and you may be bound to pornography or drugs or, 
or some other sin, uh, you may be bound in, in those areas of your life, but I'm telling you tonight that, that God is in the house where you are, just like he was where Sean was. He's, he's right there in the room with you saying, look to me, saying, what are you doing? You know, you may be a grandma or a grandpa or a mom or dad that has grandchildren or children uh, that is, uh, that is on, on drugs or alcohol, and, and you, you may be been praying for them, and, and God has now sent Sean along your way tonight just to spur on the inside of you and to stir your faith to let you know, I believe, that God uh, uh, is, is hearing your prayers. Amen. He's hearing your prayers. And, and, and so it may be your child or your grandchild, or it may be you watching the program tonight that God's saying, what are you doing? You know, what are you doing? And, and uh, you know, just like he did with Sean. And, and, and so... So I believe tonight that, that, I, I believe tonight that, that those of you that are watching the program, call the number that's on the screen right now if, if this is ministering to you. Uh, 573-840-8888. Call that number, and, and somebody will be there to pray with you, whether it's your child or grandchild or whether it's you. Call that number right now, and, and let us pray with you uh, that God's going to see you through. And, and just like you were saying, Sean, that just within a couple minutes, you set the box outside with all the stuff in it, and a couple minutes later went back to get it because you wasn't sure you could do it. Right. Uh, you know? and, and we talked about this a little bit earlier, mm-hmm. and that is that you know, there's, there's people that think when you get saved, yes. you know, when you pray the prayer of salvation, that you get everything then. Right. You know, and, and, and it doesn't always happen like that. Right. Uh, absolutely. Uh, and what, what we have to realize is that a seed doesn't just sprout up in the ground <laughs> from That's out right. of the ground. <laughs> That's right. A seed goes through a transformation Amen. process, and dying is the first part <laughs> Amen. Right. of that process. And so when it relates to our heart matters, you know, when we're talking about you know, our, our, our relationship with God, what we have to understand is that what we are and what we are in our own eyes has to die. We, we have to give that over to God and allow God to water us and allow God to nurture us and as he nurtures us, then we become transformed Amen. because we're because we're being graced with his with his word. Yes. You know, the Bible says you know, our minds are renewed Amen. That's right. <laughs> by the word of God. You'll be transformed by renewing of your mind. Okay, transforming means something has to die. That's right. Amen. <laughs> something has to die, and then when something dies, something else is brought yes. <laughs> is brought anew. Is brought anew. And so God had to change my mind about that stronghold. And in that moment, I knew that I could live without it. <laughs> I could live without it because Christ, because God was my source. You know, God is the source of, of my strength. You know, and so, you know, and so, you know, it was amazing to me you know, that God was even speaking to me mm-hmm. at that particular point. So how in the world could he be speaking to me, <laughs> you know, when I'm in this kind of shape? You know, and listen, God reigns. For the Amen. just as Amen. well as the unjust. <laughs> as well as the Amen. unjust. And it doesn't matter it doesn't matter where where you are. You know, God sees you. God knows you. The Bible talks about you know what God what God listen, if I look over the sparrow, <laughs> if I watch after the, the, the how much the sparrow, more, how much more would I would I take care of you? You know, and I and I so bless God for that, you know, because it was a it was a transforming transforming experience. And I and I had other struggles, you know, sure. uh, coming up, you know, because that's going to be expected. Okay. We're going to experience, you know, uh, uh, some things in, in life and in our relationship with Christ that, that are going to cause us to question whether or not we really believe, <laughs> or whether we really we really got it, you know. But you know, uh, the thing of it is, is that listen, you know, the Bible, you know, you know, tells us that you know we're going to go through trying times. We're going to deal with tribulation, and then a lot of people look at tribulation as outwardly. <laughs> no, the tribulation is right here. Right. right here. Okay, it's in our heart. Now that's where the tribulation is. But you know what? The, the, the Bible tells us that we are more than conquerors. Amen. <laughs> that loves us. Okay, right. and this is how this how we can we can overcome different situations, our various situations, is because Christ loves us. The Bible says, "For God so loves right. the world, <laughs> the world right. that He gave His only begotten Son. Now whosoever believes in Him <laughs> should not perish." But have everlasting life. Amen. Okay, not just life, but everlasting, everlasting, everlasting life. Amen. You know, the the uh, uh, 
li the abundant life. Yes. You know, he said, I've come to, to give you life and have it more abundant. Yes. And, and uh, I believe that's what God wants to do with each one of his children, of course, is to give us abundant life. Uh, you know, so many people, I said, well, so many people think that when you get saved, you get everything, you got it all, and, and everything's going to work from there on. <laughs> well, Satan's not going to let us go. He's right. not, he's not going to just turn loose and say, okay, well, they're saved now. I ain't going to bother them no more. No, he's going to hit us that much harder. Oh, uh, absolutely. You know, he's going to fight that much, that much harder. Absolutely. When Satan knows that God has brought you <laughs> into the fold, yeah. you know, uh, he sends his minions out immediately because he knows that you're about to be a powerhouse <laughs> right. in the kingdom of God. Because who better, Amen. who better, you know, to lead people to Christ than someone who's been through, who's been Amen. through, the, been through the fire, been through the rain, who right. who has who has who has fought, you know, uh, for the transformation. Uh, you, know, you know, we are we we are in such a, a, a great position to be able to witness and and, and convert people to Christ. Amen. You know, because of not because of how much word we know, mm -hmm. but because of where God mm -hmm. brought us from. That's right. That's right. That's right. <laughs> you know, and then that's and that and that's what we have to focus on now. You know, and, uh, earlier on when, when when we were walking through, you know, God told me He says He says, listen, He said the object is not to be profound, Amen. <laughs> but to be sound. And in this day and time, people need need to hear a word. That breaks the Amen, that sound. That's right. that's <laughs> and and right. that's the sound doctrine. That's right. Amen. That, that's the sound doctrine. You know, you know, we we've heard you know for so many years we we've heard the, the profound. We've heard you know uh, uh, the, uh, the the tinkling words. Yeah. Yeah, we've heard them. Okay. Yeah. But in this day and time, for the generation that we're in, right. the time we're in right now, right. we need a sound Amen. word. Amen. You know, come Amen. unto me. Amen. <laughs> Right. You know, the tickling of the ears is not going to get the job done. <laughs> That's exactly you right. Know, and, and, and just the, even the profound statements that we hear preachers make all the time, you know, is not going to get the job done uh, necessarily unless those profound statements are based on the That's Word. That's it. No, that They've got to be based on the Word of That's God. That's it entirely. And, and, uh, uh, well, if, if you're watching the program, you know we're talking to Sean Thompson tonight from, from right here in Poplar Bluff from, from uh, Mount Calvary Powerhouse Church, and we're... Glad that you've joined with us tonight, and, and he's sharing a little bit of his testimony of how God delivered him and set him free from, uh, from alcohol and, and from pornography and, and such, and, and hearing the voice of God in the midst of the sin, and I, I can't get away from that tonight, uh, in the midst of the sin, you know, you may be sitting there watching a program right now with sin in your hand, or with sin in the room with you, uh, but, but I want to tell you that, that God is right there with you. And, and that, that he is there to, to show you and to let you know that you don't have to live like that anymore. Uh, I'm, we're going to take another quick break tonight, and, and we're going to be right back. And, and I, want, I want Sean to pray uh, with those of you that's watching the program tonight. And, and so, so if you're watching and, and you know that God is dealing with your heart, or maybe you have children or grandchildren that God is dealing with uh, in their lives, and, and you're believing God to move and, and perform a miracle in their life, I want you to stay with us. Stay tuned. Because we're going to be back in just a couple moments, and, and Sean's going to pray over those of you that's watching this program tonight. You are invited to the 84th Annual Missouri Mid-South Gospel Singing Convention with over 30 premier gospel artists on Friday and Saturday, September 19th and 20th with a concert each evening beginning at 5 o'clock p.m. at the Malden Community Center on Business Highway 25, Douglas Street, Malden, Missouri. Hosted by Branson's own Heart to Heart with a silent auction both nights. Come and be blessed by national and regional anointed, award-winning Christian artists such as the Richmond Quartet, Heart to Heart, Tina Sadler, Wendell Johnson, Touched by the Masters Quartet, Joyful Noise, and many, many more. For more information, call Jerry at 417-576-5188 or email hearttoheartmusicgroup at gmail.com. Welcome back to Kingdom News Now. We are so glad that you are here with us tonight, and I trust that you've been blessed thus far with the program. We've been talking to Sean Thompson uh, here from Poplar Bluff, and, and uh, a great worker for the kingdom of God, a great worker for, 
uh, Bishop Ron Webb and, and uh, Mount Calvary Powerhouse Church uh, there, and, and just an awesome minister of the gospel, great worker for Sears out there with the young men that is uh, out there at Sears, uh, the, the program out there, and, and dealing with the, the, the guys that's out there, and God is using this man right here that's in our studio tonight, using him to minister to the hearts and to the lives of those boys, and not just those boys, but everyone around Mount Calvary Church, because uh, he has a host of, uh, of things and, uh, and re responsibilities that he takes care of there in the church, but not only that, we've got him tonight to ourselves. Uh, for just a little bit, and, and, and he has shared uh, some of the things that he has uh, been through and that the strongholds that the enemy has had on him. Uh, he has shared uh, the, uh, about the alcohol and, ab and about the pornography. And Brother Sean, you know, we was talking in the break there that, that uh, you know, it's not everybody, it's not every man, mm -hmm. uh, unless they know that God has totally delivered them and <laughs> set them free. Yes. Uh, and you said there's no condemnation of them who's in Christ <laughs> Jesus. Uh, but it's not every man that wants to talk about. Well, I was I was addicted to pornography. Right. You know they they don't want to admit that because you know uh, well number one it, it would be embarrassing. Right. You know, of course, but but not only embarrassing but but there again you know I believe if they've totally been delivered and set free, then then just like was stated just a few moments ago, you can dance on the devil's head with it. That's it. That's it. These are the real stories. Yeah. That unsaved the unsaved need to hear. Yes. Uh, because yes. because what what repels. Uh, unsaved from the church, and I hear it all the time, mm -hmm. is that church people are fake. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, they don't they don't communicate with us. They they stomp on us. Yeah. <laughs> you know. You know. And listen, listen. The way we reach people mm -hmm. is to be personal right. with them. That's right. Yeah. Our God is not a God that just you know sits on high. Right. <laughs> you know. Right. And 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 administers right. rules. You know, he's the God that becomes personal <laughs> with, us, with, with us. He said, I was, he said, I will not leave you comfortless. He said, I will come to you. <laughs> okay, I will come to you. And so we keep that in mind that we have to understand that in drawing uh, you know, people to Christ, if we're not real, okay, if we're not real and if we don't present our faults That's right. and show where God Amen. has brought us from, Amen. then there is, no, there is no reason for them to invest into a God they don't know. That's right. If they can't see the purpose in it, it's like it's like it's like making a making a business deal. A business deal has to work for <laughs> yeah. for for both sides. For both sides. That's for right. both sides. That's right. And 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 if if my only uh, my only comment you know to someone that is unsaved has to do with condemning what they're doing, mm -hmm. you know, then I'm going to I'm going to de to deter them right. from Christ. And push them away. You know, right. but if I can say truthfully, listen. I don't know that our situation was exactly the same, but let me tell you something about me. <laughs> let me yes. tell you how God can take a filthy rag yes. Yes. and wash it in blood of the Lamb Amen. and make oh, it whiter and whiter as snow. To, to pray for just a moment, yes. if you can pray for those that's watching the program tonight. And, and, and again, if, if you're there watching the program and, and you're at a place to where you know there's got to be a change in your life, you're not happy where you are. Maybe you're involved in, in some of the things, and it may not be none of the things that's been mentioned tonight, but you just don't have peace. You just don't have the joy that you need. Amen. If that's you, I want you to agree in prayer with us. Now, Brother Sean's going to pray here in just a second. And he's going to pray for you. He's going to pray for those of you that are bound by sin. He's going to pray for you, those that are bound by, by uh, uh, the deception of the enemy. And, and so that you will know the God that we're talking about. That you'll know the joy. You'll know the peace. That you will be totally set free and delivered. That, that when you go to work tomorrow, when you go to school tomorrow, when you wake up in the morning, you're not even just going to feel like a brand new person. They're going to look at you and say, what's different about you? You know, what, what, what happened to you? And, and so I, if you would, just take a moment and, and just yes. right there at that camera and just pray for those that's watching. Yes. 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 Father God, we just thank you right now for your saving power. We thank you, God, for your saving grace. And Lord, there is someone out there right now, Lord, that, uh, that is experiencing the pressures of life, oh God. But Father, we thank you right now for deliverance, God. We thank you, oh God, for the blood of Jesus Christ, yes. oh God, which covers thank a you. multitude, oh God, of sins. And Father, we thank ask you right now in the name of Jesus, on behalf of all those that are watching right now, God, that you would visit every home, oh God. Oh God, for that person that believes that this is the end of their life, oh God, 
God, we pray right now that you rejuvenate them in the name of Jesus. God, we bind in the name of Jesus, oh God, every spirit, oh God, that will cause them to see, oh, oh God, everything bad, oh God. But God, I pray right now, God, that you will open their eyes, oh Lord. Oh God, that you will heal their hearts, oh Lord. Father, that you will bring joy into their spirits, oh God. Whether they are in the hospital, God, whether they're uh, in the home, oh God, whether they're driving in their car, Lord, we pray right now, oh God, that your peace, oh God, will cover them in the name of Jesus. God, we thank you because we don't have to stay, oh God, in the same shape we've been in, oh God. We thank you, oh God, for your saving power, oh Lord. Oh God, oh God, do, Lord, as you will with our lives, oh God. We're giving it to you right now, oh God. We're handing it over, Lord, and saying, use us, God. Deliver us. And we bless your name for it, God. In Jesus' name, amen. If that was you, if that prayer was for you tonight, and you received uh, through that prayer tonight, I want you to go to your phone and call the number that's on the screen. Somebody's there to answer it, to talk with you and speak with you and to point you in the right direction. If you've just received Christ, you've repented, you've received Christ as your Savior tonight, I want you to call us and let us know. The Word says confession is made unto salvation. You need to talk to somebody. You need to tell somebody what Christ just did for you. Whether that's saving you, healing you, whatever it may be, you need to speak that out your mouth and, and share that with someone. Go to the phone and call the number that's on the screen. Get on Facebook. Talk to us on Facebook and, and uh, go to Kingdom News Now Facebook page or, or Midnight Cry and, and like those pages and, and uh, post your requests and, and things there. And, and let us know that you've heard from us. Some of you people, I know some of you that watch this program every week faithfully. You tell me that. Some of you do. And some of you I see in town several times a week. And some of you don't tell me that you see me. So I want you to come make sure and let me know that you're watching the program. You see me in town somewhere. Stop me and tell me. And if you've watched this program tonight with Brother Sean Thompson uh, with us, I want you to tell me what it did for you. I want you to tell, you, tell me if it ministered to you. We want to know. Uh, we want to know that, that what we're doing is working and, it, and is, is doing uh, we're doing what God has called us to do. So so just let us know that. Again, call the numbers on the screen. Let us know, Brother Sean. We appreciate it, Brother. God bless, God bless you, man. you. Thank you so much uh, for taking time to be here with us. And, Thank you and, for having us. In fact, I think, I just sat here thinking a while ago, we just need to have you come back and just take the hour and preach. <laughs> God be the glory for <laughs> I, I think we need to do that sometime. We'll just try to get that on schedule and and uh, let you come back and just share what, what God has spoken to you and, yeah. and, and share the word. We appreciate it. God bless you. Amen. And your family, your lovely children, and your wife and family that's here in the studio with us, we, we thank you all for being here with us tonight. And again, until we see you again, Satan has a plan to kick you out. God still has a plan to keep you in. <laughs> Amen. God bless you. I would rather be no place I would rather be no place I would rather be than here in your love than here in your love there's no place I would rather be no place I would rather be no place I would rather be than here in your love than here in your love I would rather be no place I would rather be no place I would rather be than here in your love than here in your love there's no place I would rather be no place I would rather be no place I would rather be than here in your love than here in